Pozdrav, dobrodošli u novi INA podcast. Evo, kao što znate, kroz ovu cijelu godinu INA slavi 60 godina svojeg postojanja, a kada govorimo o tradiciji istraživanja i proizvodnje nafte i plina, ona je puno duža od tih 60 godina. Važan kotač u tim aktivnostima je INA servisna kompanija Krosko. Ona je zadužena za istražna bušenja, remonte bušotina, kako na kopnu, tako i na moru. I zato mi je zadovoljstvo pozdraviti direktora Kroska, Ferenca Tara. Hi Ferenca, welcome to the INA podcast. Hey Josep, thank you very much for inviting and I'm glad to be here. Drilling services, well work hours and well services is core of Crosco business. Uh, it sounds so traditional, uh, but uh, you can be important player when it comes to green transition and transformation of uh, the industry. Yes, indeed. Um, Crosco has 25 years of international and local experience, great reputation in the service arena, oil field service arena. Um, we are serving our customers as an integrated service provider for through a full life cycle of a well, um, from drilling, well maintenance and work over until its abandonment when the well is finished production basically. Um, as an integrated and, and this is a great foundation basically for uh, the green transition, especially specifically for the geothermal arena we are facing and looking forward to, to playing in. Um, basically, as I said, as an integrated service provider, we try to provide solutions and, and basically operate for customers as a one-stop shop. So they could come to us with their plans, what they would like to do, and we try to offer as much from the service portfolio we have in Crosco, um, both traditional, as you said, oil and gas, and uh, also in the new dawn era of uh, geothermal. Recently, Crosco signed new contracts with the uh, Croatian Hydro Hydrocarbon Agency. Can you tell us a little bit more about? Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm very proud of that and I'm proud of the team who achieved this. This is, this is a joint team effort basically between the Crosco team, the INA upstream team and the SDSI team to get that far. As I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that we've been awarded. Um, specifically, we talk about four wells, Osijek, Zaprašić, um, uh, Vinkovci and Velika Gorica in a worth of 40 million uh, euros. It's a turnkey project with the same companies together in this project um, for district heating purposes. Um, we, will st we already started the preparation, we are already ordering material for the projects. They uh, will start coming in as the year uh, progresses. The first steps or bigger steps, what we will start doing towards the end of the year, well site preparation, drilling will commence as we planned beginning of next year and then the final uh, stage and the last well finishes at the beginning of 2026. Uh, also recently lots of companies and local communities in Croatia are eager to conduct geothermal exploration uh, but there are no so many companies like uh, Crosco to satisfy the market needs I would say. Uh, so you recently employed uh, around uh, 60 new employees if I'm right uh, is it connected and is it uh, and you already said that geothermal uh, energy is a new dawn for your company so will there be new workers in Crosco in future? So yes, um, we do see a steady market in the in the traditional oil and gas arena. Um, we're serving ball and in needs uh, uh, mainly, but uh, we also do see a geothermal market focus or priority coming up in Croatia and also the oil and gas market will be steady in the CE area um, with the other OFS companies as well. Um, we do, based on the foundations, as mentioned earlier, 25 years of experience, knowledge, what we gathered in Crosco helps us a lot basically to grow in that area and easing in basically to, to capture those markets. So we closely follow every customers, either in oil and gas or in geothermal basically. And uh, we do foresee a two, next two to four years a growth in that arena. Um, great examples we have in the past already. Last year we already drilled two wells for an external company and we also maintained several work over uh, activities on, on, on several other wells for other uh, companies. One of the 
biggest success so far this year is uh, a turnkey project, very similar to the agency project, what we just won. Um, for Terme Bielovar is uh, City Bielovar, Korenovo GT Bomba, which we finished as we promised on plan, on time, on budget, as uh, was described. So related to your question, um, those employees, those colleagues we hired, yes, they are mainly serving the purpose that we, were, we will successfully address this growth, what we foresee in the future for Crosco. Great. Uh, so can you explain me the difference? Is there a difference uh, when you are drilling a geothermal well or if you are drilling a traditional classic oil and gas well? Great questions. I, I get this a lot of time. Um, there's not much of a significance of a significant difference base between those those well or those types of wells. Um, depends on the geothermal purpose what they will use. It could be a shallower wells for heating purpose, or it could be a deeper wells. The main differences are coming basically from temperature. Geothermal, hence the name. You know, it's elevated temperature, so certainly the fluid, the mud system, which we operate during drilling or work over, needs to be carefully designed, maybe a bit differently than uh, traditional oil and gas wells. And also the well design, like how the tubulars are placed in the well, at what depth they are running casing or, or tubing basically, is or slotted liner, open hole. I mean, all these technical terms, they are a little bit different, but majority of, 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 the, of the operations, I would say, is rather the same than what we actually do in the oil and gas wells. Uh, you mentioned the depthness. How deep can it be? Oh, it could, it, it could vary from 1,000, 1,200 meters down to the 45,000 meters as well, right? Because it all depends again on the use of the hot water, what they will use it after. If it's heating, for heating purposes, mm -hmm. um, lower temperature enough to serve the purpose. If it's for electricity, we talk about the 120 plus range, 120, 30, 40 degrees Celsius, what we are looking for. And do you maybe have in your head the number, what is the deepest cross covel ever? Um, now you caught me on that. I know for sure in Hungary, when Crosco worked there back in 2006-ish, um, we managed to drill down to 7,000 few hundred meters. It's quite deep, isn't it? Uh, very near the center of the earth. <laughs> it sounds for me like that, <laughs> but I know that, that it's not. Uh, what about uh, oil and gas wells? Is there still demand for that on the market or...? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, we still need to maintain those wells, what's in the portfolio for both Mall and Ina, certainly to maintain uh, basically production or as, as uh, by, it was said by the group management as well, to manage the decline. Certainly new wells need to be added to the portfolio and we need to, and upstream, with upstream together, it's absolutely need to be managed that um, those wells are producing the longest period as they can and Crosco plays a vital role in that along with the other OFS companies we have. Uh in the movies, old movies, uh, when the oil man finds the oil, oil is spraying all around and they are celebrating. That's how it looks like in the movies. Is it in reality the same or can you explain it, how it looks like and how Crosco people celebrating after discovery? <laughs> yeah, um, it's, let's keep that for the movies and it's in the movies to raise tension and attention basically that's for the show right in fact in real life that's the worst thing could happen i mean those sprays as you refer to they are as we call them a kick or a blowout that's the worst thing that could happen through drilling or any manipulation of the well when we are working on the well um, Actually, our aim, in fact, our aim and, and priority to prevent that from happening, right? So we use various equipments, uh, mainly BOPs, blowout preventers, and we have strict well control policies, um, which needs to be adhered to and, and, and followed to the T, um, that we prevent uh, such events from happening. So if you see an oil spray, run, right? That's not the place you want to be. And, uh, no. no time for ce yeah. celebration. <laughs> yes, because um, it's actually going to cause more trouble. Um, 
So we, we, we do not want to have any of these oil sprays coming really. I mean any of these sprays coming and you may have seen that those are actually happening in, in controlled environment so don't worry about those. Um, regarding celebration, yes, I mean we do celebrate with our customers of, of their finding because that means that they did good planning and we provided excellent execution and, and solutions basically so they are successful and as uh, the saying goes happy customer is a repeat customer so yes they will have money for new wells <laughs> well we hope so and they will return to us yeah uh, how safe are these exploration and drillings for the environment and the people today uh, you mentioned some uh, processes that are happening on the site uh, what can you tell us about your perspective of, of health and safety and how do you see it uh, fit into your company's uh, business operations? So, they are absolutely safe. Processes are in place, equipment maintained, um, equipment and, and adequate equipment are in place to maintain all the safety and HSC aspect basically of our work. Um, HSC is in fact in the genes, in the bloodstream of Crossco and the OFS companies as well. It's a very serious work we do. I know it's a risky work as well, but those risks need to be mitigated and we do that effectively. Um, Crossco actually through the international uh, exposures and experience, um, you know, we learned a lot as well and, and we apply all the international and national policies in line or HSE policies in line with the MOL and INA standards and that's not a question that it needs to be followed again to the T. Uh, what do you think is the most uh, effective uh, way to raise safety awareness in the company like yours? Yes, yeah, so, so safety, what I believe in um, and the most effective way, first of all, leadership and management, commitment, dedication and transparency towards all the colleagues in the company. Secondly, um, training and, and giving ownership to the colleagues as well. Thirdly, through the training, you know, we need to teach and educate the people basically how to recognize the risk and the hazards by, uh, around the operation and the work they're doing. And uh, we enforce that through stop card system as well. And then finally, and the list goes long, but, but I think it's more important piece of the, the puzzle that event investigation, in, in an unfortunate case there is an event happening, a thorough investigation needs to go through, you know, actions to be defined, followed up, and nevertheless lesson learned and applied basically um, in our everyday life going forward. Those are really important steps and I believe them. You mentioned stop cards, they uh, said to me that uh Crosco is a champion in Ina Group uh, with a record number of reported uh, stop cards. Uh, uh, someone will think uh, maybe that's bad is it bad or uh, how did you succeed to create culture and commitment of your employees um there is nothing wrong with stop cards and it's not bad right so it and and i hear that comment a lot as well yes and i'm proud of the the, the colleagues as well because those numbers are tremendous with all fairness um and and it took Crossco and Crossco Group years to get to that level. Um, there's nothing wrong, as I said, with stop cards. It's anonymous. It's not a blaming game, neither a blaming platform. It, it shouldn't be used that way. What it is, is, is a risk and hazard identification. And basically, all what we ask the colleagues, when you identify that, put that down in a simple written form. Put down what you saw, what you think is not correct, and how could you mitigate that or what did you do to mitigate, mitigate it basically. Um, to simply put, stop card is nothing more than, actually everybody, if you think about, everybody does in their life. You, you travel, you drive car, all what you do, you, you, you basically look at what's in front of you, behind you, and, and you try to see the risk and the hazard and you try to avoid them. Or changing, simple example, changing a light bulb, climbing a ladder, right? Mm -hmm. So all what you do, you take a look at the letter, is it fit for use, is the, you know, the main electric switch is switched off, can I, you know, there's nothing more. All what we ask, put it in Britain. And then, and then basically what we try to incentivize among the colleagues, we have various rewards, 
Um, you know, we have monthly best stop cards, we reward them, and we have yearly best stop cards as well. So I do believe, as the previous pillars, so transparency, commitment, training, um, reward system, all that helps this cultural change of, of, of the people and recognizing like there's nothing wrong or nothing bad with this. Great. Uh, how do you see cross going 10 or 20 years from now? Um, that's a good question. I, I wish I have a crystal ball. I don't. Um, uh, Crossco will be around, that's for sure, that's not a question. So, you know, the life cycle of the wells, right? Those wells in a portfolio needs to be maintained until it's abandoned. And it's legal obligation at the end, it, it needs to be abandoned. So, you know, there will be, until that point, work done on those wells. So, so I do see in the oil industry that we will be around for the next five to ten years period. In geothermal, we'll see future tells. Um, how far this uh, uh, will uh, evolve and, and uh, develop, but I do believe as well that it will be also growing. So I, I, I do have a positive feeling about that Crossco will be around for sure and growing. Uh, when did you arrive in Croatia? Three years ago, three years almost ago. three years ago. What do you like the most here? Well, look, um, <laughs> it, it was a new to me. Um, since my childhood, I spent I don't know, almost every summer we, we've been on a seaside, so Croatia wasn't, wasn't something new what I experienced here. I always loved the people, the atmosphere, the way of living, the food, you know, the weather. I mean, there's not much to complain about, to tell you, honestly. Um, uh, I, I really enjoy being here, the colleagues, um, the way of thinking, it's a bit different. Um, certainly every country I worked in uh, in the past, you know, they, they have different things to offer. Um, Croatia is also unique in this, this, this perspective and, 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 and I really enjoy, enjoy it and appreciate it. Uh, did you learn some Croatian words? <laughs> well, uh, Are they any particularly interesting? Well, uh, <laughs> look, the thing is, uh, Croatia, Croatian for me is, is a tongue-twisting language, really tongue-twisting one. and, and and, and I'm also spoiled uh, by the knowledge of English from my colleagues. So that doesn't help learning a language like that, right? So unfortunately, I'm, I'm not mastering Croatian. Um, uh, and it's a shame of me. Um, certain words, I have favorite, a few favorite words. I mean, I love idemo. Like you guys are always saying, idemo, ida idemo. Um, odlično, I like a lot. And then the, the word I remember from my childhood, when you go through the, the uh, highway gate, it always tells you, Shretan put. Yeah. I mean, even before I came here, even my kids were already saying, like, Daddy, Shretan put, you know, <laughs> when we pass through the gate. So, I mean, it just stuck in my mind. Uh, super. Uh, how do you relax? Well, <laughs> it's hard, because <laughs> my mind is always around, like, you know, what to do, how to do. I mean, we travel a lot. Mm -hmm with the family, with, with, with friends, long show, you know, long haul, short haul basically. Mainly we, we, we use our time to travel, right? We, we try to see different things, whether that in within Hungary or the nearby countries or really long haul overseas. Um, uh, it comes from my career uh, uh, earlier. Um, we, we, we really love to see the world we, with the family and the friends and, 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 and to see new cultures, opportunities, how people are living, what they eat, how they think. Um, it, it, it gives me a lot of inspiration, to tell you, honestly. So that, that's pretty much, you know, I, I wouldn't go like, yeah, I sit back, read a book, whatnot. I like movies as well, right? So those rainy days or snowy days, yes. Sit in front of a TV, watch a series or a movie, yes. but. Travel is the main... main uh... But the sun is calling you out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, latte is your favorite coffee? Well, it, in it, Fresh it, Corner. It, it, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, I don't know, I, I, I didn't see it. So, caramel latte is my ultimate, mm -hmm. right? What I, what I really like in, in the Fresh Corner. Um, uh, uh, the other thing that I like as well, the, the, the variety of the hot dogs. I think um, Fresh Corner went beyond, above and beyond with these, these uh, hot dog offerings. Um, I love the uh, cheese one, uh, the cheesy hot dog with the, with the hot ketchup. 
Mm-hmm. It's, it's absolute favorite or Croatia special uh, Burek Sosirom. Um, <laughs> you can't beat it. Just <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Great, uh, Ferenc, uh, Thank you for being my guest. Uh, I wish you a lot of uh, positive wells in the future. Thank you very much, Josip. Voila, voila, jepa. Uh, sretan put. <laughs> sretan put, ja. Yeah. Hvala i vama, dragi uh, slušatelji i gledatelji. Sretan put i vama. I zapratite nas na, i na YouTube kanalu. Vidimo se u novim epizodama.